Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm a little late on this one, but at least most people have seen it and I can talk spoilers. What's with the word home being in the subtitle of every one of these new Spider-Man movies? The first one should have never been named after a high school dance, in my opinion. Spider-Man Homecoming? It just sounds doofy and feminine, because aren't girls more concerned with their high school homecoming dance? I never went to a high school dance, so I wouldn't know. But for whatever reason, I've come to refer to this new trilogy of Spider-Man movies as the Home Trilogy. I don't get it. It sounds soft to me. There's no place like home. Home is where the heart is. I'm gonna make this place your home. Home again, home again. Well, there's a few titles you might see next. Oh, I got one that's slightly masculine. Spider-Man Home Team. Or if you want to be patriotic, they can do Spider-Man Home of the Brave. Anyway, the first one was so forgettable to me, I couldn't even tell you who the villain was. The second one, Far From Home, I turned off about 15 minutes in because the constant sarcastic humor just sucks me right out of the action. And the new one, No Way Home, is about the only installment from this new trilogy I thoroughly enjoyed. And I think the main reason for that is this sequel basically addresses and corrects the fact that Spider-Man has been remade three times in such an abnormally short period of time. You got three Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, and then the Andrew Garfield reboot, then they only did two Andrew Garfield Spider-Mans, and then they reboot again with Tom Holland. I, I would have much preferred we be on, like, either the seventh Tobey Maguire Spider-Man by now, or the fourth Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. And if you feel the same way, it should be satisfying to see all three Spider-Mans from all three Spider-Man franchises in the same film. It's the only reason I watched, and the only reason I was able to forgive the new breed vibe and tonality this time around. These new Spider-Mans take every opportunity humanly possible to stick in some fucking sarcastic humor every two fucking seconds. There's some witty, sarcastic bullshit. Even in this one instance, a woman is almost killed by Doc Ock, and when Spider-Man saves her, she's like, that was not okay. What's wrong with you? Why are you acting up like this? It's very immature. I much prefer the more serious tone and the other Spider-Man movies with their charm and more subtle approach to humor. Nobody is phased by any of the life-threatening situations in these new Spider-Man movies. That's the issue with all the sarcasm. Like, oh, it's just a Green Goblin bomb. I've seen worse shit in high school. Like, no, you haven't. The entire plot of the movie is born out of teenage naivete. While I appreciate that this may be the first franchise to ever take on a more juvenile tone, acknowledging how young Peter Parker really is, the whole plot unfolds as a result of several life-changing mistakes Peter Parker makes, resulting in villains from other dimensions entering his realm and even Aunt May's death, which is kind of fucked to see that Spider-Man is a competent hero, but Peter Parker is just a silly kid. It's a bizarre plot, but it works to bring in all the cameos you want to see and lends to the moments of self-reflection needed for drama, and Christ, do I love those moments where nobody's saying some dumb shit. I am so worn down on superhero movies, it's really hard for me to be fully engaged, but this one plays pretty well. It's like the Spider-Man Expendables. Now, again, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire joining in on some of the young-minded sarcastic dumb shit humor bothers me a little bit because it doesn't suit them well, but it is redeemed by the dramatic moments between all three Spider-Mans, which were pretty well written. Doc Ock and the Green Goblin are better than ever performance-wise, which is a big plus. Glad to see these guys didn't phone it in. Jamie Foxx, however, plays a completely different version of the Electro I remember from Amazing Spider-Man 2. That character was kind of a nerd, but here he's hip and witty and again, sarcastic and humorous, which isn't quite true to the character the way I remember him from that movie, but whatever. This is probably the most I've liked Zendaya, and uh, is it Zendaya? <sighs> White boy pronunciation. Either way, a lot of emotion this time around, a lot of tears, and I enjoyed the romance with her and Peter Parker a little more this time around. I, I really was not too enchanted by the other two, with, with her like little tough guy, hardly impressed by anything attitude. Like, I, I've been I've been known you were Spider-Man. You know, what's the big deal? Uh, whatever the fuck. All in all, it's a good flick. It's well-paced, has good setups and payoffs. It's entertaining through and through. But I'm getting old for these CG superhero flicks, so anytime they want to give us some real nostalgia bait, I'd like to see another grounded, less sarcastic, less over-the-top Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, and I'm sure the fans would too. For the home trilogy, for me, it was two strikes and a home run. Good flick. Nothing out of this world, but I enjoyed it. For your consideration in all categories at the Academy Awards, I think the fuck not. But if you haven't seen it, check it out and put your thoughts below. Yeah,